Well, hello, everybody. My name is Ben T. Matchstick coming to you live from Montpelier, Vermont. And on the screen over there is Pete Talbot. Hey, what's live up? Everybody? From Minneapolis. Say hey, Pete. Hey, how you doing? I was just enjoying that paper roller coaster workshop that was just before us with engineering with paper, and I think it came out pretty good. Thank nice. You. And what's cool about paper is what's cool about cardboard is that you can tinker with it all you want, and there's no harm in making mistakes. You can, you can go crazy with it. You can undo it. You can start over, and you're not going to have too much of an investment in the materials. And that's what cardboard for the people is all about. Cardboard for the people. We're going to make uh, a couple things today and we're going to go through kind of fast because we want to show you a lot of tips and techniques. What you see here is a, a beautiful cardboard picture frame that Pete Talbot cut on the laser cutter at a makerspace. And in the frame, you'll see us at Maker Faire five years ago. That's when we started our Pinbox 3000 cardboard pinball machine project, which then turned into a really wonderful little business where you can build your own pinball machine using cardboard. And we'll talk about that at the end of the session. But before we, but before we do any of that, we're gonna get to the cardboard for the people part. So what is cardboard all about? We need to know what tools we can use. For cutting, there's so many ways to cut. The most preferred is the X-Acto knife. Now, if you have a knife with you, uh, today, make sure you have a parent around who's going to be watching and helping you today. And make sure you have a cutting surface and make sure you have a nice clear area. My desk is a little cluttered right now, uh, but we're going to talk about cutting techniques in a little bit. Uh, cardboard is great folded. And we'll talk about why cardboard should be folded in the direction that you, uh, which will give it the best strength. You know, one thing that you should look at when you look at a piece of cardboard is that it has a corrugation. That's also called fluting. And it's called fluting because you can play it like a flute, um, a pan flute. But that corrugation is where all the strength lies. So if you go to a grocery store and you see a bunch of boxes stacked up, there's a very good chance that the corrugation is all going to be pointed up to the ceiling and down to the floor and not this way. Because if you were to try to bend it one way with the corrugation, you're going to get a nice, strong, clean bend that's straight. That's in the corrugation. If you try to bend it the other way, ugh, you're going to get a kind of messy. Uh, ugh. There you go. So you can do it that way. But as you can see, it's a little bit creasy. So we're going to talk about folding. We're going to talk about adhering cardboard together. Now, my preferred methods are regular white glue. Um, a glue gun, I like to use a nozzle tip that is very pointy so that you can get really uh, in there. And then tape. Now, one thing I don't use is duct tape because duct tape is so big and it's so sticky and it's, uh, it's too tacky and it's also expensive. So you could use regular masking tape, uh, painter's tape, or this special brown tape, which we like to use. All right, that's adhering cardboard. Joining cardboard. Now, there's lots of ways that you can conjoin cardboard without having to uh, use any kind of materials whatsoever, just using slots and tabs. So here's one method. I just cut the piece in two different slots, and we'll do a little bit of that today, too. And deconstructing cardboard. Cardboard is beautiful, even when it's deconstructed. You can find uh, all kinds of things that you can use uh, with cardboard when you take it apart. You know, it has very cool properties. Um, let's see, what's the piece I was looking for? Ah, let's try this one. Um, deconstructed, let's try it. So I take a piece of cardboard, and maybe I just lift off the little edge of it, and I can start to peel away the layers. And you can get, there's a really cool way to do this, to get that beautiful corrugation. Just use your knife to kind of lift it up. I don't know. I like it. It looks, it reminds me of like a tin roof. All right. And we'll talk some more about deconstructing. Here's some other folded things. 
you know, I was just messing around with cardboard and I got to do some cool folding. And this is all held together with slots and tabs and different folds. All right. We talked about the strength of cardboard and why, how it lies in the corrugation there. And we're going to talk about the memory of cardboard. Now, you don't really think of cardboard having memory. You might not think of that. But you notice that this uh, fold that I made earlier is always going to spring back. And if I try to eliminate those two folds that I made, I can't really do it. See, because they're always going to be there. And that's going to be called the memory of the cardboard. And it also gives us a little spring action. So we can think of that tension uh, when we are working with cardboard, we can decide to do some really cool things using tension. You know, like if I were to just try to make a little standy with this, I could shove it right in there and it would, it would splay out because of the memory of the cardboard. I could crush it, Ugh. I could crush it into a weird shape and stand it up and already I've, I've got a structure. You know, it looks junky, but that's what it is. That's why cardboard is great for prototyping um, because you're going to have these pieces that, uh, you know, is going to give you a good start for whatever project you're trying to build. Even if cardboard is not your uh, final material, it's great for prototyping and for trying things out. Cardboard is very flexible um, in many ways and the possibilities of cardboard are endless. So if you have a cutting device with you, we're going to make a little standee to start. So grab your piece of cardboard. It doesn't matter what size it is. We're going to get a chance to build a little character here. So we're going to cut a piece. Could be a square, could be uh, a different shape. Let's start with our little hair on this guy. Now when I'm cutting, I'm always going to be cutting away from myself. I never want to cross cut. So I'm never, I'm never going to pull the knife towards my hands. I'm always going to have my hand on one side and the cardboard on the other side. And I'm going to move the cardboard around so that I'm always cutting in one direction. So this is the line of cutting. I could vary it a little bit for curves and whatnot, but I'm always gonna be cutting in that direction. And here's a question. What do you think is more dangerous, a dull knife or a sharp knife? What do you think? I think, and what, what Pete, go ahead. What do you think? Um, a laser knife. Oh. <laughs> Well, now let's let's take out lightsabers and laser swords and okay. Oh, okay. Uh, knives, knives of that sort. Well, what um, do you think is more dangerous, a dull knife or a sharp knife? Well, I, I'm cheating because I know the answer already, but I think that it's a dull knife. That's my guess. You are right, sir. Good answer. Okay. It's because you're going to be forcing the knife to do things that it doesn't want to do and twisting it in different directions and, and kind of pushing it in directions that it doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to go in. Mm. Um, and a sharp knife will always get a nice clean cut. Um, so yeah, we have a shape here. And uh, remember, I use the fluting of the cardboard because that's where the strength is going to be. So I want to stand up anything I'm going to do using that strength. Um, for the standy part, I'm going to show you a special tool. Um, this is a tin snip. Normally used to cut tin. Oh, there's Pete's got one too. Nice. That's good. There's Pete on it. Yeah. So we got to use what we can find. And they don't make cardboard shears yet, but uh, wouldn't it be nice? This is the closest thing we can find. There are some downsides to this, and they're pretty heavy. So, um, and that's this is going to be great for making little slices, little slots. So we're just going to do like a quick little slot here. Two little slots. And maybe I'll draw my face now. There we go. And then I'm going to cut the feet for it. And this gives you an example of how fast and easy you could do something fun. I mean, you could make some Halloween decorations. You could make some Christmas decorations. You could make some Hanukkah decorations. You could make any kind of decorations, party decorations, and boom, a little standy. Now, those are fun for making games, like, you know, shoot a rubber band at these guys. And this one, I cut out the teeth with a, an X-Acto knife. X-Acto knives are a little uh, bit more precise 
And the same thing with those is that you want to make sure your knife is very, very sharp um, before you begin. So I keep them in a nice case. And with this one, I cut out the teeth so we can shoot rubber bands at it and knock the, knock the teeth out of this guy. Yeah, nice. that's kind of fun. Standees are really easy. Here's another idea that you can do with your uh, cardboard, which is a fun project. You know, I was reminded when we were doing the paper project uh, with paper engineering, how relaxed I feel when I'm building and how if I'm worried about something it's very fun and easy for me to sit down with some materials and just to tinker around. I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to do anything too serious sometimes. Sometimes I am, but other times it's just a nice relaxing activity. So take a piece of cardboard. Again, it doesn't matter the size. And for this one, we're gonna, we probably won't finish our maze today. Oh yeah, let me, let me try it out here first. What you got, Pete? Nice, is that your standee? Yeah. Oh, it's great. Like my my Zoom, uh, you know, <laughs> oh. my stand in, keep my stand in, so I can just go do other. <laughs> For all those meetings that you really can't be at, you could just. Yeah. So I made this game yesterday, and then I spent about an hour and a half trying to solve it. Um, <laughs> but it's really fun, and I realized that it, it I learned a lot by doing it. And um, there's one thing, there's a couple of things I want to teach everyone uh, in trying to do it. So. Uh, the first thing is that we're going to make some walls on our little maze here. Yeah. So let's let's take this piece off since we're not playing with that right now. But we're going to start with some little walls. And I'm going to cut a bunch of strips, and they're going to be in the direction of the fluting. Now, the reason we started the Cardboard Tech Instant Toot is because we wanted to encourage people to not be too precious about how they're building things. We just wanted them to be as instant as possible. And so we're not too concerned about uh, you know, making things precise. Once we have our little walls like this, there's lots of ways that we can stick them on. Um, I'm going to use a hot glue gun for this first one. Mm. I'm going to get it right on there. I'm going to be very careful so I don't drip on my hand. You know, a hot glue gun and strips of cardboard can, you can have a lot of fun with it. And then you hold it down for just a minute. There we go. Let's put a few more walls on there. If you've got cardboard at home, this is a great thing to do. Yeah, it's super fun. Put some walls on this guy. You can search for cardboard art on the internet and see some really amazing creations. Some of them are very realistic sculptures. Some of them are giant puppets. Pete and I met when we were kind of working together on art projects, doing schools, and uh, working with school projects, uh, doing art shows, giant puppets at music festivals. Yeah, the cardboard. That was... Yeah, you want to talk about the at, -AT Imperial Walker that we made and how we made that? Um, that was that was crazy. That was called Bessie. Um, it was a 13-foot um, tall uh, at, -AT and um, it was constructed by taking a smaller paper pattern and then projecting it up onto cardboard and then tracing that and then cutting it out. So enlarging uh, a little paper model, um, but then, you know, comp you know, complexifying it, adding some simplexity to it um, and uh, turning it into a backpack puppet. So um, you have two framed backpacks and then uh, Ben, I remember, what was it? Was it day, the morning that it, that it marched. Oh yeah. We were figuring out. Like eight in, eight in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Through the campsite yeah. of all the uh, festival goers, <laughs> we marched through. Yeah, playing uh, the imperial theme um, on a harmonica, which is the most relaxing and uh, <laughs> wake up to. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 
modified harmonica, of course. Yeah. And it's viewable uh, on YouTube. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, NEKMF, the Northeast Kingdom Music Festival. It was really fun. And that was the second year that I went to it. The first year we did it, uh, the cardboards. And I remember making my cardboard like full body costume um, in my apartment. And I had a bunch of cardboard in this room and I just, I fell asleep so many times while making this because it was just so comfy to lay down on <laughs> cardboard in my like all these like cardboard scraps I felt like a little hamster it was great <laughs> yeah well I know our time is limited so we're just gonna try to get this so it, so you can see how it gets started and now I had a little challenge when I was trying to figure out how to put holes in this and actually the challenge was how I could teach kids how to put holes in these things too so mm -hmm. I, I'm using this tape roll here as my base, and I'm gonna set where I want my hole on top of the tape roll, and I'm gonna punch it through with, uh, this is an awl. It's not all, but it's all. I could also use a golf tee hmm. to do the same job. I could use a screwdriver. I could use a pin. There's a couple of different things I could use, but then after that, I'm gonna use a pair of scissors, and I'm just gonna punch in and twist and I need a hole that's a little bigger for the marble that I want to use. So I'm going to use this Sharpie marker because it has a cool shape and I'm going to shove that in. And it's not a pretty hole, but it is round once you get it there. And then I'm going to put my uh, ogre in there. And then I'm going to take the marble hero and I'm going to try to get my marble through the maze without waking the ogre. Mm. Ah, ah. So far, there's not much maze, but ah! Or maybe I eliminate the ogre and put him over there, and I gotta try to get into this hole without yeah. uh, getting the ogre to touch me. Oh, oh boy! Oh, oh. <laughs> he's gonna get away! Yay! <laughs> Made it to the next level. Um, so yeah, there's a game that you can make at home. Uh, you can use any piece of cardboard. This one has a little bottom, so the marbles roll out. Um, I can take some pictures of that and post them on our Instagram. Uh, here's a game I also made real fast. I was trying to think what I could make in like 15 uh, minutes or less. And so this game came out. It's called Buzzer Beater. It's a tiny little uh, hoop. Uh, and for this, I used the Engineering for Papers uh, great idea to use paper clips. Um, so let's see. Ugh. I have some paper clips here. And I can demonstrate my messy box. So this is something that engineering for paper and dazzling discoveries taught me. Take a paper clip and just bend it up like this, and you've got a nice uh, angle that you can tape things onto, right? You can tape it on and make like a little standy. It's a very good idea. And so I did that with the basketball hoop. You can see the paper clip back there. I deconstructed cardboard to get that nice little shape, and I used tape and I uh, used a brass brad to um, affix it. And I have, of course, the memory of this cardboard is such that it's always going to flex. So I have a little launcher here. So I just bent a piece of cardboard. This is going against the grain because that gives it that really good flex. And now I just need to build a little ball. So with that, I'm going to just cut a piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can learn a lot about cardboard by studying origami and paper folding. And um, paper crafts. Everything that you see on, uh, on that will work on cardboard at, at a certain scale. Like yeah. maybe not the largest scale, maybe not the smallest scale, but on a medium scale sometimes you can get... Oh, I almost got it. The buzzer beating. Three, two, one. Oh. And then you could position it. I also thought I could make a little, uh, little defender. I was thinking about making like a defender that would another player would manipulate it on this side and you can have a little <laughs> defender going back and forth. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? The most important thing is that I was having fun and I was crafting and I didn't think about anything else. And sometimes when you're really nervous or stressed, like I was a little, oh, what, you know, if you have any tension in your life, it's really fun to just get some cardboard and mess around. Um, yeah. I got a little, I got a little game. Let's see. All right, let's see. I'm going to do this. Here we go. 
So this is uh, this is one that I made a while ago. It's called Ricochet. Ricochets. Uh, game ball. Game ball. <laughs> and so uh, it's just kind of like a little bag of tell, and you just push the marble up, and then it bounces up around here, and then these are little divots of the marble won't fall through, but they'll stay in. And so you can either like try to get them all up in there, or you can try to knock them out. And then this just works with the, your hand, like your finger pushes the marble up like that. And it's That's just like- awesome. Super simple. Boink. Oh, I almost got 50 points. I almost got points. What's the, ah, oh, oh, multi-ball. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, Speaking of multi-ball, uh, I've got exciting uh, news for everybody watching. If you have a Pinbox 3000 at home, um, our Maker Fair Playboard is going to be free for the weekend. If you want to download it, uh, it's a free. Uh, it's going to be free this weekend. Um, normally it's three dollars, but it's a little paper craft uh, playboard that you can add to your Pinbox 3000. Now we started this project because we really wanted to encourage uh, kids to make and to experience the tactile game world. And uh, our little Pinbox 2000 has done the job. And you can play to your heart's content without any plugs, screens, batteries, or anything like that. Oh, I got a multi-ball lock. Oh, so yeah. Unlock my multi-ball. You're going to add your own sounds. You're going to add your own points. Um, come on. Oh, nice. Ball locked. <laughs> Um, and you can take the playboards out and you can switch them out. So if I'm done with this, uh, I can uh, I can make another one and I can iterate on this one. So this is really cool. It just has a lot of features on it. You can color it in. Um, and again, it's like where paper and cardboard uh, mix together. Uh, wonderful things can happen. You can see that it's, you know paper has a lot of the same properties. So uh, once you start tinkering on anything, paper, cardboard, um, and even wood, a lot of those same uh, theories can apply. Here you see the, the bounciness of paper. That is kind of something that, you know, this little discovery of having like a bouncy little wall that's made of paper is quite effective, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't know if it's time for questions yet. We're kind of moving kind of lightning speed here. 1050, but if anybody has any questions, maybe start getting them ready. Uh, we can ask, answer questions about the Pinbox 3000, our business, uh, building with cardboard, uh, any recommendations. Um, you can find us at pinbox3000.com. That's where you can get the Pinbox 3000. We also put up videos on YouTube quite a bit, Cardboard Tech Institute. You can search Cardboard Tech, T-E-C-K, and find us on YouTube. Please subscribe. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Um, let's look at a few more games here. Once you start seeing cardboard for what it is uh, as a material, other materials start showing up and saying, hey, what can you do with me? I, I, have, uh, I have exciting properties that I'd like to share with your creations. So I find that any recycled materials, oh, there, yeah. Ooh, Pete's got one too. Oh. So yeah, play a little pinball, Get some cardboard in your life. Let's check out what Pete's playing. Oh, yeah. What you got, Pete? Uh, this is Return to Atlantis. Mm -hmm. This is uh, one where I tried to add the traditional in lanes and out lanes, um, where if you don't launch it fast enough, it just goes point and comes back down to your the marble return zone. Right. And uh, yeah, and then, you know, if you add a little marble right up in a, in a spot like uh, that, then you can hit it with another marble and then that will unlock it and you'll get multiple. A lot of really cool pinball, um, you know, traditional effects and, and uh, tricks that you can do with corrugated cardboard and gravity. There you go. You know, I like to use even this thinner board. Uh, this is just called box board or cereal box board. 
I don't know if you can see right there, but that's very flexible like paper, but also really strong. Um, so I use a lot of that as well. Um, you know, just start experimenting with weird things and attaching things, you know. Inventing games in cardboard is like, I don't know, it's something very uh, soothing about it. Yeah. You can get real funky and add you know, extra flippers. Like the, since this is cardboard, you can just hack it. So this has extra flipper on there. That's so cool. Can we see the underneath of that? Yeah. It's like if you take the playboard out and flip it over. So this is like a, uh, I'll see if I can get it. This, everything's backwards. So. No, that's good. I can see it good. Nice. So that pushes that, and it's basically just a simple machine. Right down. What's that? That's very satisfying. <clears throat> then you can have multiple complicated structures and all kinds of cool stuff. You know, a lot of times when Pete and I were teaching um, uh, summer camps and stuff, kids would want to make swords and things. And one of the biggest things that they would always do is make is have the corrugation of a long piece of cardboard running the wrong way. So that's the biggest thing. If you want to make a piece that's really strong, make sure that corrugation is running with the sword, with the structure. Um, here's another shape I wanted to show everybody, a conical shape. This is a actually a, a snack. Uh, funnel. So if you want to eat all your snacks at so once, you just put your mouth up there. Oh, give me the snacks. And you can pour all the snacks at once in there. Um, yeah, but let me show you how it was how it was made. If we flatten it out. Snack funnel. There we go. Just like this. And then using my knife to uh, score, uh, not cutting all the way, but just doing a light cut uh, through half the cardboard that allows me to score it and I always fold into the score because if I fold it away it would expose all that corrugation and potentially make it weaker so I'm always going to fold into the score another quick trick that you could try is to retract your blade and press into the fold like that and it will make the crease uh, increase funny how that works there we go. And then you can do it like that and then fold it up and you've got a nice conical shape. Yes. yes. Amplification. Ampla. We're, we're on the we're on the pro tips, uh, quick pro tips section of the of the portion of the presentation. Here I uh, I couldn't wait for my glue to dry, so I used two neonidium magnets to hold the pieces together while I was while I was waiting for it to dry. So I got my magnets and bloop, and let let the magnets do the work to hold it while it dries, and then I could just move these off, and now I have a nice uh, piece doing doing its thing. Pete, what so, do you got? Okay, so uh, this rules right here. This is a three-sided yeah. uh, architectural rule, uh, and you can use this to do compression scores. So that means like if your corrugation is running this way, but you want something to go like diagonally. It's really hard to get it to fold unless you crush the fluting. Yeah. And then, oh, it wants to fold. So nice. Oh, so nice. So nice. So nice. Also, clips are really handy. Any kind of clips that you have, binder clips to oh, yeah. bind things, uh, uh, paper clips, or, or even uh, clothes pins, these can actually be glued right onto the uh, game or the whatever you're. Uh, whatever you're building, you can glue it, glue on, and you can get a lot of um, interesting ways of attaching things if you have clips on things. Or you can use it for your scoreboard, which is another cool thing I thought of. You can add it to your game and have like a scoring track and move your clip up and down the scoring track. Yeah, that's good. What's that, Pete? Is that a fanny pack? It is a fanny pack. Um, so I invented this. I just looked at a fanny pack and I was like, you know what? I bet I can make that out of cardboard. And I did. So I was just using wow. um, rubber tie. This is just like 
an example rubber tie length. You could get bike tire tube that's popped from any bike shop. They'll just give it to you um, if you say please. And, um, and then you can cut that up and use that like uh, bungees or um, rope and, and add it to your cardboard creations. So that's just a simple little lock tab type of thing. Super fun. Keep all your snacks in that and then funnel it into your mouth with your snack funnel. Uh, I don't know if this presentation will be accessible on YouTube, but we do have a lot of other videos and uh, I'm excited, Peter, that you were able to join us. Um, thanks for your question. We do have other videos and uh, we'd be happy to uh, do it again. Um, it's great to know that people are interested in building in cardboard and we'd be happy to do it again sometime. Um, here's a bike inner tube that I'm cutting up just right now so you can see. Um, these are actually really great for adhering cardboard to uh, sticks. So if you have a stick or a dowel or uh, even another piece of cardboard, this can act as a great binding uh, property, the, 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 the inner tube. You cut it up into these little strips and then you can make even smaller strips. And what's great about this is they will, it will tie together and you can even just do, all you have to do is like, your normal one, two, three times through, tighten, and it's gonna be so, so tight just because of the tension. Yeah, it's like already like really, really tight. Um, so temporary, but uh, these are great, like massive rubber bands that you can get at any local bike store. Pete, let's see what you got. Uh, this is a fanny pack, or no, no. <laughs> this is a tool, uh, tool belt. Yeah, this is actually one of the things, the first things that you should, you know, open my eyes to is like you just take your tools and you just wrap stuff, wrap cardboard around whatever you want to hold and then make a little pocket for it. And it's like a perfect custom pocket. Um, and then what I did is I paper mache this uh, and it made it really, really strong. And then as it was drying in the driveway, um, my landlord ran over it with his car. So that's why it looks all crazy and flattened. But this is like two years old. So even though it was crushed, it's still good. So paper mache. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. Yeah, I was going to talk about water and cardboard. There's an artist out there, and maybe you could find him. I wish I remembered his name, who takes uh, cardboard um, tubes from inside of uh, toilet paper rolls, and he sculpts them with his hands and makes faces using just water. So water is very interesting with cardboard. Here I have a glass of water and I'm gonna pour it carefully on my cardboard and I'm gonna smooth it around. Let's take a look at what I'm doing here. Ah, they can't see it anymore because I just <laughs> pushed it way too far. Anyway, putting water on cardboard is not gonna kill it. It's just gonna change it. Um, actually just put it on my computer. So let's wipe that off real quick. Okay, so once you get that layer, the first layer of cardboard wet, uh, then the water will seep through and it will make it easier for you to peel the layers off. If you take your cardboard scraps and you dunk them in a bucket of water and leave them there, take a five gallon bucket and fill it with cardboard scraps and water, then uh, you'll be able to peel them all apart and you'll have great paper for your, like a paper mache project. And uh, I have a recipe for paper mache. If you're interested, you can email at us, email us at uh, info at pinbox3000.com and I'll send you my paper mache recipe. Um, it's taken from Bread and Puppet Theater in Vermont where we use cornstarch uh, that's heated up like a kind of like a gravy, a gluey gravy. But yeah, this paper is actually really good. And what you should remember is that cardboard uh, has glue in it already. So if you have a hot day, you can crinkle up paper and leave it in the sun or cardboard, crinkle it up if it's wet, and it will dry in interesting shapes. So already I kind of see a face on there. So what could you do not using any tools, just using a slab of cardboard, getting it wet, shaping it, folding it, bending it, leaving it in the sun, letting it dry this way, and then decorating it. I mean, you could probably make a little a cool mask out of this if I, if I just started shaping it and forming it with my hands. All right, thanks for, uh, thanks for following us. Thanks for coming on board and for our thing. And thank you, Maker Fair. This has been a great pleasure. We'll see you, everybody. Uh, come follow, find us at pinbox3000.com. Bye.